Okay, side note. The Porsche got a new wing, check it out. It's so sick. Well, we got the roll cage. Now Jonathan's helping us clean this dash because it's much easier to clean before the glass guy comes and put the window in. Thanks for helping us, Jonathan. You're welcome. <laughs> so I didn't have a drill long enough to cut the hole through the bumper. I went ahead and used my impact, attached to some socket, attached to my hole saw, and uh, we were able to cut this piece out. It's kind of a slim piece on the bumper. But right there is where the parachute is going to come out. So it shoots off of this bar right here across and into this hole right here. So I've got the other part notched up. I'm going to go see how it fits. Okay, so now that we got the bar shooting out the back bumper, it will attach on. You know, kind of like that. And we'll need to mark it and trim it and drill a hole through so that this parachute mount will slide in and this bolt can attach it. So, I'm gonna go ahead and drill that now. And then at some point, it will mount like that. All right, I got that bar fully welded in. And now we have a parachute. And it's removable in case we gotta put it in the trailer, we just take that bolt out and we'll come out. Right on. We have the cage fully welded, so it's completely, completely done. And now we are adding in mounts to put his new seat. Check this out. I started fabricating this with some bars I had laying around the shop. Let's see if you can see that. Okay, so this is um, uh, one by two square tubing. Same with this, so I'll be able to put the bolts through there. I went ahead and used the factory location points uh, with some bent strapping. And now I'm just tacking it all together, kind of reinforcing it. And I'm going to add a little brace bar underneath for stability against the floor. That way uh, the seat doesn't flex down or anything weird like that. All right, I got that seat bracket all welded up with the supports. But now I was thinking I really wanted to know where the center point was so that I could make sure to get Steve, you know, centered with the steering wheel so it's right directly in front of him. So. I couldn't really think of any other way to do this, so I used my, my long keychain that was kind of heavy and straight, and I hung it right off of his, his steering on center, and then just kind of waited for it to get, you know, exactly settled. And then I took a long ruler and basically just drew a line so that I knew where the center point was. So now when I go ahead and mark the holes for the seat bolts to go through, I know that I can use this as a center reference and the steering wheel will be directly in front of him. So that should work out pretty good. Now that I got these seats all torn apart, I can actually go ahead and drill the holes for the mount. And we're gonna put that plate onto this chair and then bolt it to the actual frame that we made up. All right, we got this seat mounted to the side brackets and the holes drilled to mount it to the actual bottom inside seat bracket. But now I was thinking, since the next thing I got to do is worry about seat belts, I kind of set my welding helmet in there and mocked up my seat belt at least for this front one and the two sides. And what I think I'm gonna do is I am going to weld up some tabs you know, here and here to mount these so I can bolt them in, you know, quickly if they need to be changed or adjusted. 
should be in a very convenient spot. So, I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. I think I'm just gonna take some regular bar stock, uh, shape it how I like, drill some holes in it, weld them onto that seat bracket, and then we should be mounted. So I went ahead and sandwiched it between two of those pieces to make it extra strong, and then I'll just weld these tabs to the actual seat mount. That way, if it pulls forward, it's at a pretty strong angle, keeps the seat belt attached nicely. Okay, I got everything final welded and tacked together. The bracket is all one functional unit. We got places for our seat belts. We got all the holes pre-drilled for the seat to actually mount on it. Now it's time to make it look a little better. Uh, you know, raw metal is not the greatest look. So we're gonna go ahead and paint it on our official painting area here. Give a little black uh, paint after we get some primer on it. And then we can let it dry and go ahead and put it in the car. Well, while I'm waiting for that seat bracket to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and start working on the parachute release handle. It looks kind of like this. Basically has a long cable that goes through this sheath all the way out to the back of the car. It'll attach to the parachute. When you pull this handle, parachute comes out, car stops. So we're gonna go ahead and find a really nice spot for this to mount in the car so Steve can reach it and stop the car when he needs to found these things, I think they'll work just fine. They're little rubber isolated clamps and I can clamp around the front roll bar tube and then attach it to the bracket. That way it'll stay right where it's supposed to and it can pull back and forth to release the parachute. So now once we tighten it up, you'll be able to just pull. Bam, parachute deployed. Finished product came out pretty good. Get our seat belt tabs. That is gonna look nice. What do you think? Oh, this is amazing. I love how you already like set up this. I don't even know what this is. What is this? This is just a. It's just a random bar that goes there. And you can <laughs> bolt the seat to it. Yeah, I made it to support the back of the seat. So that oh, you, that's fucking awesome. You just don't move in case, you know, but that's like a serious bar, like it ain't going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. It's chromoly tubing like the rest of the cage. So yeah, like you can grab these bolts. You could slide it back into place, and uh, we could test fit, test fit the seat. You just have to bolt it all together. What up? Hunch is here. What up, Hunch? What up, fool? No, we just gotta like wipe over it, just from you know maybe our hands. But I already wiped it down with the wax and grease remover, and I scuffed it with that thing, and tried to get all the sticky spots I could find, like you know from like the packaging stickers and stuff. So it's pretty much ready. The trick now is just masking and I, I've been just the roll cage. Yeah, I've pretty much been welding till the last minute you got here. <laughs> Look how much dirt comes off of that. Yeah, so you imagine when you paint any of that quality, that's it. That's it. Yeah. I can crack the door and uh, and turn the fan on if you want. Will it make it dry too fast or no? That would be pretty good. It would be pretty good? Okay. I'll do that right now. It's funny, when I put that piece on, I didn't actually think about painting it. <laughs> I guess I could have painted it before I stuck it on. Oh my gosh, it looks so much better with white paint on it. What did you just bring? I brought boxes. And shirts. Oh snap, we got freaking panda shirts. We got freaking panda shirts. Oh my panda gosh, shirts. you're wearing one. Perfect. Nice, that fits good. That's like, the per that's like a perfect fit. It just barely, barely touches. Doesn't even dent it. Well guys, definitely put some hours in on Panda Hatch this week. 
Got the roll cage completely finished, door bars, everything in, even the seat belt mount is done. We're able to get some paint on it, thanks to having our friend Hunch come by from the body shop, helping us get the etching primer, get it clean correctly so the paint will stick and stay good for a long time. Today, <clears throat> we went through and cleaned up any of the spots on the floor where we had taken the paint off and cleaned it all the way down good and put some other primer on it. Even though it goes under the carpet, we still want it to be you know, rust free and clean and whatnot. So let me show you how the car looks right now and uh, check this out. Pretty happy with the progress. I know it's kind of slow right now, only having just the cage done in the third week, but setting the cars up to be safe is very time consuming. And the fitment's, you know, kind of challenging. He's got to get each bar to fit right, make sure we got ample room for the driver to sit. I mean, I probably spent four to six hours just building the seat bracket for him the other day to make sure that he then was in the perfect driving position. <clears throat> I want him to be able to reach the pedals correctly, you know, be able to shift and grab staging brake and whatever else he needs to do. Let me show you what it looks like through the back. I mean, I think it came out really good. That about wraps it up for this week. Glad you guys tuned in to see what we're doing on it. Uh, things from here on out are gonna start moving real quickly. We have a ridiculous amount of parts on the way. I know I keep saying that, but you're gonna start seeing them coming up here in the next videos. The list is so big and so long. I can't imagine people try to do a sport front wheel drive car in this time frame. I'm not even sure how we're gonna make it. A September deadline for the track is kind of ridiculous, but man, we're just gonna, every day I wake up excited to do something new on the car and show you guys what we're working on. So stay tuned for the rest of it. Catch you guys in the next one.